The gate was 2.85 million. The attendance was 17,011. Can't read this. Second large or something. Awesome. Uh, fight of the night was Weidman versus Jacare. And the performance of the nights were Israel and Cannoneer. So they all won $50,000. Congratulations to them. I can't figure that out. What was it? The second one? Boom. Good for us. Huh? Who's got the first question? Dana, were you anything surprised you about the main event, DC's dominance, or did you see that kind of going that way possibly? Yeah, listen, that was obviously a possibility, but yeah, I, I was surprised at how easily he dominated him and did whatever he wanted to do. Impressive. We were all talking yesterday about, you know, where does John Jones rank? Could he be the best of all time? But where would you put DC on that list? He's got to be up close. To Absolutely, the top of the and not not just to, you know for what he's done fighting two different weight classes, undefeated at heavyweight. Um, you know, only lost to John Jones at light heavyweight and, um, you know, outside of the octagon too, who he is, how he represents the sport, how he represents the brand, uh, how good he is as a broadcaster. And, and I mean, the guy's just all around incredible. One day when you decide to possibly step away from the UFC, could DC be a, be a guy to be the president of the UFC? You think it's could be an ambassador in that way? Oh, definitely. You, you know, if, if you look at uh, the, uh, you know, when we do these the promos now, I mean, he's one of the big guys that you see in the promos that breaking down fights, talking about fights, um, uh, whether he's on the desk at Fox or he's calling the fights for us, whatever he does. I mean, the guy is incredible. He's he. he he could absolutely, he could do anything. He literally can do anything. I saw him doing an interview with me. I actually posted one of the interviews he did with the media the other day talking about, uh, you know, how Derek changed his life and this guy isn't going to fool me. This guy's a smart guy. And I mean, I, I was just so blown away and impressed by the interview. I'm like, I'm reposting. Have you ever seen me repost an interview that's been done by that? I've never done it. It was ours too. Thank you. Appreciate that. Was that yours? I mean, if I didn't. Uh, you did that? Well, you're just trying to take credit for team, it. Team effort. Team effort. <laughs> team effort team got effort. it. Last thing yeah. for me, Dana. Uh, is is Brock next for DC? And any idea when that could could happen? I, I don't know. We, we got to see. I, I I don't know what he's got going on. Brock, that is. He just got done with. I haven't talked to him. Uh, congratulations once again. Uh, third time here at the Guardian 205. Connor Wild 217. Ridiculous. Three title changes. Mayhem. Wildness. How would you sum up tonight? Thanks. It was awesome. I mean, this card was incredible. Incredible uh, from the from the bottom to the top. I think you saw some new stars break out tonight. Um, you know, Cannoneer is a guy that I was really high on early on when I saw him fighting a couple fights. So then I, I moved him too fast and I put him in with Glover Teixeira, who wrestled him to death. Uh, standing up, he was beating Teixeira on the feet. Teixeira wrestled him and, and and whatever. I said, man, this kid, this kid could wrestle. This kid could be very dangerous and and and, and whatever. But, you know, you can't learn to wrestle that fast. So my guys come to me when these fights are falling apart. I'm like, we want to do Cannoneer versus Branch. I'm like, no, we're not doing Cannoneer versus Branch. Cannoneer can't wrestle. You know, you're going to go in there and throw him in there again. They're like, he's begging for this fight. Sometimes we have to protect these guys from, from themselves. So all, the, all this shit goes on. We end up doing it. And wow. You know, I felt... I literally got up from my seat and walked over, you know, when he was walking out of the octagon, telling the story. And, uh, yeah, wow. You know, especially against a guy like Branch, the, the way he, uh, you know, he handled the wrestling in that fight. And then, obviously, Israel has been a guy who um, has been on the rise here for a minute. But I, always, I, I really felt like tonight was his first big test. Uh, you know, obviously, his opponent... Uh, hits like a truck and, and, and wrestles really well. And Madison Square Garden opening the show, and man, did he deliver. And, uh, you know, many people, including me, think this kid is the future. Absolutely. And uh, he, he, uh, he went out and put a stamp on it tonight.
do you, would you like to see DC stay up there or drop down, obviously, against Jones eventually? What do you think DC should do? I don't know. There's so many options for him right now. You know, let's see what happens with Jones. What I think he should do is go home and spend some time with his family. He stepped up and took this fight on short notice um, again for us. So just DC should go home, relax, have some fun, and uh, take some time off. Uh, you mentioned Adesanya. I mean, looking back at UFC Perth, it wasn't even that long ago that he made his UFC debut. Tell us a little bit about... We're talking about Israel? Yeah, Israel yeah. Adesanya. Yeah. I mean, tell, talk, talk to us a little bit about this quick rise. Is this one of the... Yeah, listen. And working with him. The minute I saw this kid, I was like, holy shit, this is really good. I like this. Um, then you hear him talk. And I like that too. Uh, you know, he's he's the whole package. He is very uh, He's very ambitious. I would like him to pump the brakes a little bit. And, you know, this guy wants to fucking fight everybody right now. And he wants to fight every month, which I love. I, listen, you want to become a big star? Keep fighting. If you're, if you're a young guy who's healthy enough to fight all the time, I absolutely advise it. Do it. You, what you don't want to do is come out and put on a great performance and disappear. Because people forget real quickly. Um, but, yeah, he, 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 I like him very, very much. And... Uh, I, I, I don't want to move him as fast as he wants to be moved. So he and I will get together and find a happy medium. Because mm, it's interesting. Obviously, Robert Whitaker will be fighting in Melbourne against Calvin Gaslam. Is he a guy, he was talking through the media week, he wants to be a backup for that fight. Obviously, Chris Weidman lost his fight, so he's yeah. no longer a backup. Right. He's not, no longer going to be a backup. I lo listen, Israel, Who's be the backup I love it. I love this kid. I love this kid. Yeah, maybe he'll be the backup. We, we'll, we'll talk about it. I... I I literally can't sit here and tell you enough good things about this kid. I like this kid a lot. And uh, like I said, he came out tonight and put the put the stamp on it, man. He, he came out and really looked good tonight. I mean, if you look at how good he's looked in his other fights, he didn't, he didn't even finish. He finished Derek Brunson tonight. It's a big deal. Final question, Jacare. I mean, he went out there and he showed us a new aspect of a striking game. Was able to beat Chris Weidman. It's kind of like he's got a fresh start. Everybody's excited to see what's next for him now as well. What do you do with a guy like Jacare at this moment? Yeah, one of the things, I don't know if everybody else noticed this, but he, in that fight, you know, I, Chris Weidman came out and was absolutely just picking him apart. Um, but Jacare would not stop moving forward, man. He was moving forward. He was throwing punches. He, he, he was ripping him to the body. Great body shots that he had thrown, but he just wouldn't quit. You could tell this guy wanted to win this fight so bad. Um, and, and, and he caught him. He ended up catching Weidman, and uh, I, I thought Weidman had three rounds in the bag and, and was on his way to a win. He was two minutes away from, from winning the fight, um, but th that's what happens when a guy wants to win that bad. He looked good tonight, um, and, and yeah, it, it's, uh, he obviously put himself in a great position, and, and we'll see what's next for him. What did you think of the stoppage? I, th I think he that Jacare was a stud at the end and, you know, knew that he was out and he didn't need to take any more punishment. Um, and, yeah, you know, it's all, I always have a lot of respect for guys who do that. You know, you, you see some guys do that sometimes and get in trouble. The fight doesn't end and, and the fight keeps going on. But you could tell by the way Weidman fell, that fight was over. Listen, D Daniel Cormier, whether he's at, at light heavyweight or heavyweight, is a tough guy to beat, you know, whether you're Lesnar or Stipe or Derek Lewis or any of these other guys. The thing was, <clears throat> for people that – what I've been arguing about all week um, was people that are saying he, he didn't deserve this shot. You know, he's the number two ranked guy in the world. Who deserves the shot? He, he just beat Stipe in the first round. He knocked out the heavyweight champion in the first round. This guy's ranked number two. He just beat the number whatever guy. Who deserves it if it's not Derek Lewis? You know, and, and whether you got two, three, five, six, seven, Cormier is a beast. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a handful for anybody. Yeah, and definitely Brock. Everybody, I said every everybody includes Brock. Yeah, you know, um, obviously with. This being the second biggest pay-per-view of the year, Daniel Cormier is a draw for you guys. He seems to think he has one fight left. 
Uh, you have a pay-per-view in March that's two weeks before his birthday in Vegas. Does any part of you want to try to convince this guy to stick around, you know, more than one fight? No, I never convince anybody to stick around. If, they, if somebody thinks they're done, if it even crosses their mind that they're done, you'll never hear an argument out of me. When you say you're done, you're probably done. And, but it's interesting, right, because he it seems like Brock will be the last fight, and you said yesterday, talk about you feel like him and Jones probably are going to fight again or something. So what happens here? I mean... If it doesn't happen, you're cool with that? If it's just DC fights Brock and retires, and that's it? I have no idea. If I was a genie, I could tell you that, but I'm not. Uh, we got to see how all this stuff plays out. Um, like I said, I think Cormier should take some. I really appreciate him stepping up and taking this fight. And, uh, you know, he needs to take some time off and spend some time with his family and heal his body up. And, you know, um, you think about Cormier. This guy's been doing this for a very long time, you know, wrestling and, and mixed martial arts. And, uh, you know, he's going to be 40 years old soon. He's got a lot of wear and tear on his body. Take some rest. He's, he's, he's an absolute freak, man. He, he's such a talented guy. And, and, and when I say talented, I mean in every way, shape, and form, he's a talented guy. Uh, <clears throat> we had Ben Askren come backstage tonight. He was in the house. Did you have the chance to speak with him? Yeah, we just talked when I was, this guy thinks I hate him and all this. If I hated you, why would I do that? I'm the one that did this deal. I'm the one that came up with this deal. This was my idea. Why would I do this if I hated you so bad and didn't want you to be here? And, um, it just, it makes no sense. Did you unblock him on Twitter? I, I didn't even know that he was blocked on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. It, it like wasn't my first priority. You know, I, I've been doing some shit, you know, I've been busy. I, I But yes, I had my... My girl that does it, unblock him on Twitter. Do you have any idea when he could debut? He seems to really want, you know, Colby Covington, Darren Till, one of those guys. I'm just as excited. Listen, in, in this sport, you know, you find guys that, that, that people believe are great or they believe they're great. Um, it's very hard to go undefeated in this sport. I don't care who you are or who you fought. Very hard to go undefeated. And we have situations like this. I love bringing people in like him to find out if they really are. This is... It's incredible. It's a great, great, uh, you know, in my opinion, it was a great deal for me. And the first quarter schedule for 2019, you guys announced that tonight. It's like 11 events in the first three months or whatever. Um, can you just talk about how <clears throat> everything came together for that, the transition to ESPN, and, you know, is there any fights being made at that point for that first big ESPN show in Brooklyn? Yeah, we're working on all that stuff now. Actually, this fight had a lot to do with what was going to go on there. So we, we were... Uh, you know, we wanted to get this one behind us, and we'll be back in the office Tuesday making fights and getting ready for the first of the year. What do you mean by that? Is that just meaning, like, some of the guys on this card can yeah. be on there? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. A um, couple quick questions. For some of the losers, unfortunately, in this, Weidman, uh, it's been rumored maybe if he lost and lost bad, it might have been his last attempt at 185, maybe he moves up a division. Um, is that part of the thought process now? He's had he's lost to a lot of the top fighters in the division, might be stuck in limbo if he doesn't. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about what he's going to do after tonight. I haven't heard anything. We haven't talked. And obviously leading up to a fight, we're not talking about what's going to happen if he loses. You know what I mean? Um, you know, Weidman will go home probably take a couple weeks and, you know, shake this off and then start talking about what's next for him. And with uh, Lewis, you know, losing to Cormier is, you know, everybody's lost him except for one person, obviously. Right. So it's not the end of the world. Not, but not, not, not terribly damaging to him to lose to the champion. Are there thoughts of who he, you know, Naganu, Stipe, just whomever just happens to fall in his lap in a few months? Who? Uh, for, for Derek? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Adi Asanya is uh, very ambitious, but you wanted to pump the brakes a little. There was something on the UFC Twitter right after the fight about him possibly fighting Rockhold soon. Would you like him to fight that high caliber of an opponent next, or would you like him to kind of work his way up through the middleweight division? That's absolutely not true, and uh, that probably was something that was, you know, who should he fight type thing. Yeah. Should it be Rockhold? Should it be this? Yeah, it's not true. We have an opponent in mind for him. Yeah. Yeah. It's not rock old. Uh, does his rise remind you at all of Connor's rise with just like calling people out, talking smack and, you know, beating opponents that are favored against him. 
fighting uh, off. I, I think it's totally different. I think he's a completely different person than than Connor. He has a completely different personality than Connor. He, he's very different. Obviously, a very different fighting style than Connor. I th- I, I wouldn't compare those two at all. Would you can consider doing something with him and Whitaker in Australia or New Zealand in the future, considering they're both from that area? Well, he was just saying, gentleman over here was saying he, that Israel wants to be the backup on that card. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Um, have you talked to um, Diaz at all about no. tonight? No. Do you have a message for him? No. Regarding the 165 or anything like that, even all, after all these weeks? No. Do you think that uh, – would you like to see him versus Dustin in the future still happen? I'm not interested. Uh, I, listen, I, I've explained this 100,000 times. I, I, yeah. We have a guy who loves the Diaz brothers. He tried to make this fight. This fight did not happen tonight. You know, We call those guys and we offer them fights. So no yeah. regrets to that. I mean, the card's still dominated. It's still crushed without him. So I'm very happy. There it is. I actually forgot he was supposed to be on the card. My man. Yeah. <laughs> there, over here. Yep. Um, it's a bit of a change of pace of fight weeks, obviously. Uh, there was a lot of animosity in the previous fight week. How nice and relaxing is it for you to just have a calm, smooth sailing and almost jovial fight week? I'm sorry. Say, say that again. <laughs> Amazing. I'm deaf, man. You got you just talk a little louder. I'm saying the last fight week, there was a lot of animosity between, obviously, Connor and Khabib. This one's the complete opposite. Right. How nice is it to have a nice, jovial fight week? L- listen, it is it is what it is. I mean, I, I say it all the time. This is the fight business. You're going to have people that don't like each other. Is- Israel and Brunson weren't very friendly with each other. They, they you know, there was some animosity between those two. But but that's normal. This 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 is people fight for a living. And, and, and you're going to have, you know... The guys that don't like each other, and you're going to have the guys that totally respect each other and have no problems. You know, it, it's it's all good to me. You know, the, the thing is, is that we were prepared for the whole Khabib thing. We were ready for all the stuff that happened. I didn't let fans come to that first press conference, and I was absolutely right not to let fans come to that thing. Then we were ready for anything that was could possibly happen, and Khabib slipped through that one guy's arms and got over that fence. And you know, but even when he did, we had the whole thing wrapped up in 40 seconds. You know, less than 40 seconds. I didn't put the belt on him. Nobody was throwing things till he got to the um, to the tunnel. All good. Well, you, you've touched on the lightweight division there. Obviously, it's nearly been a month since everything that happened in Las Vegas. Have you had any thoughts on how you're going to proceed with that? Proceed with the division? Yes. Um, well, we're, we're, we're on, uh, you know, we're on the Nevada State Athletic Commission's time now. We're waiting till November or December, whenever that thing is. And, and uh, when that thing plays out, then we'll know where we sit. Then we'll know what's next. And uh, I, I don't know if you saw Connor's uh, Instagram <clears throat> post not too, not too long ago. He said that he's willing to fight whoever's next in line if he doesn't get the rematch. Connor and I talked for an hour last week. And uh, typical Connor, you know. I would love an immediate rematch. I want to fight him again. But I'll fight whoever I got to fight to get back to him if that's not the case. And the final one for me. John Jones is back now. Do you believe this is do or die for him now? Obviously, his, all his past transgressions. Do I think that what? This is this is his last chance. Yeah, I mean, if if John Jones <clears throat> had another mistake leading up to this fight, it would be, you know, just it, it would blow his career. Yeah. Uh, just speaking of the welterweight and lightweight division, have you had any contact with George St. Pierre? And obviously with Ben Askren in here, a big dream fight has always been Askren versus GSP. Would that at all be considered when thinking about what could be the first fight? We for haven't him? talked to GSP at all. No. And just uh, just on Luke Rockhold, obviously he was really drawn to go back to middleweight because of this rivalry with him and Chris Weidman. Now that Weidman's lost and we know the complications that he has with some of these weight cuts, would you be looking at possibly putting him up and letting him go up to light heavyweight and possibly fight a guy like an Anthony Smith or someone like that to I've, set himself I've up? I've always been cool with that. He's having problems with his leg. I, you know, he's got bigger issues than where he wants to fight. He, he, every time he's, he, he gets better and tries to get into camp and get in shape, his leg keeps splitting open. So he's got to figure that out before we can even think about another opponent for him. Just last one for me, since Habib came up, I know we have to wait for the commission thing to unfold, but his team did come out and say that if he was to fight again, they, they want a $50 million payday. Is that realistic for him for his next fight? Sure. 
<laughs> Come on. What is realistic? Huh? What is realistic for him? They, they know. They know what's realistic for them. They know the answer to that question. It's fun to say though. We're up fifty million. Go ahead. Hi, Dana. What's going on with your plans to step in the boxing world? You said once you wanted to step in the boxing world to do some promotion. What are your thoughts about that? I'm working on it, man. I've been flying around for the last two weeks working on boxing deals. At, so. le at least one detail or whatever. Soon. soon. Soon, my friend. Okay. Thank you. I'm coming. Good. Yeah. That opponent that you guys uh, you have in mind for Adesanya, could it be Anderson Silva? Ad Adesanya? Yeah. A anybody is possible right now for him. You did say you had an opponent in mind, though. Oh, I do. Yeah, I do have one. Is that? I'm not announcing it tonight, <laughs> but I have one in mind. I mean, there's still we we still got to talk to, you know, I I haven't even talked to Israel yet. I haven't. I, he texts me after the fight, and that's it. I haven't I haven't talked to him, seen him, nothing. So when I see him, we'll talk. And he's in here. What's up, buddy? <laughs> maybe he, you can, maybe you can ask pizza? him now. Uh, What's up? You have How are you, kid? All right, you guys want him next? Yes. All right, he's up. Have a great night, everybody.